I, I want to thank every one of you for being here. And I thank you on behalf of the Lord. It, there's nothing that he wants more, the creator of the universe, than a relationship with you. And you were created with a need for God. And that need is, it's, it sometimes feels like emptiness. It feels like disappointment. It feels like depression. It feels like something's missing. And you're wondering, man, there has to be more to life than what I'm going through right now. And we start off life really excited as little boys and little girls. And we have dreams and we have aspirations. And I want to become this and I want to do that. And it's a lot of joy when you're a little boy and little girl because you have hope. But as you go through life, life is not as easy as people make it seem. And you start running into heartbreak, abuse, hurt, loss, disappointment, failure, mistakes, broken hearts, addiction, death, sickness, loss of a job, financial problems, to name a few. Because I didn't probably name everything you went through. And then people are saying, you, how you doing? And you're like, good. How about you? Really good. Right? If you're in church, you'll just use a Christian East thing. Too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> but the reality, you're probably not being honest. And, and where do you go with all that pain, all that hurt, all that struggle? Uh, there's only one. And this is what we do. We do, we do try to self-medicate. And we just say, if I just hook up with this person or if I just shop a little bit more and go to the Walmart, save me Walmart, right? Or go gambling or whatever your thing is that you go to to make, you feel, make yourself feel significant, make yourself feel whole, make yourself feel like you're worth something. And, and you're going, but this is what happens. Every round that you do that, you're emptier, you're more disappointed, and you're more hopeless. And, and the crazy thing is, is to have everything this world has to offer and find yourself lonelier and emptier than you've ever been. And that's why some of the big movie stars and athletes and people have made a lot, a lot of money. They're killing themselves and they're ruining their marriages and they're ruining their families and they're lost. And you say, what's going on with them? They have everything this world has to offer. They're still empty though. And until you have a relationship with the Lord, the emptiness will continue. The depression will continue. The fear will continue. The hole in your heart and the depth of that pain will continue. And you'll just try to protect yourself from someone else hurting you. And that's when you start putting up walls and you start being angry. And, and you don't let people in my life. I'm not going to let you because you ain't going to hurt me. Matter of fact, I'll hurt you before you ever hurt me. You don't even know who, you, who, who, you, who you're messing with. So you take on all these personas and personalities because there's something missing. And today we're going to be really talking about what is missing. And we're going to start a series on the abundant life. Say it with me, the abundant life. Experiencing, experiencing for yourself, not religion, but the abundant life. And Jesus did not come to give you a religion. He came to give you, give you a full and complete awesome life and you don't have to wait to get to heaven to have it you can start come on you can start receiving it right now and start walking this out no matter how bad things are why don't you pick a new leader and get a new life today Jesus came to say uh, Jesus came to, I came to give you life so we're going to be talking about that today I am so glad you're here on Sunday the first Sunday of the month Literally, you're saying, God, I'm putting you first. First day of the month, first week of the month, I'm putting you first. And this is what I advise you to do. Keep doing that, and I guarantee you this, your life will be transformed for the better. Keep doing it, and you're going to start changing your thinking, changing your family, changing your results. Your emotions are going to change. Some of you that came in here with a frown, two weeks from now are going to be smiling. You'll be like, why am I smiling? It's change. How many believe that God changes us? You came here bound, you're going to be free. And whatever pain and hurt you're going through, I pray God's comfort and strength touches you today. And, and you're going to get through this. It's not the end of your life. And I know some of you are going through major tragedy. It's not the end, though. God will turn even that tragedy around for good. And I know, how can he? God can, okay? So are you guys ready? Are you ready to get into this series? It's going to be awesome. Let's pray. 
Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to study your word. And Holy Spirit, teach us. Use me to teach and help us to learn it and then get convicted enough to do it and then share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Today, we have all our campuses are actually tuning in with us. So we want to welcome them. We have the Way AZ Arizona Safford Church with Pastor Robert and Veronica. Let's give them a hand. We have the Way Pomona with Pastor Chris and Maribel. Let's give them a hand. And the Way LA with Pastor Gabriel and Abriana. The Way Arrowhead with Pastor Joe and Deanna. The Way Kenya with Pastor Brian. And the Way Uganda with Pastor Alfred and the 100 churches in Uganda. Let's give the Lord a hand. We're all going to start off on the same page today. And I want to make sure that we're hearing it and we're starting, off on, we're starting off together. In these next 40 days, say with me 40 days, we're going on a journey to building our faith through the daily study of God's word so that we can receive and begin to experience the full and abundant life that Jesus promised to give us. We will learn eight principles that are guaranteed to cause us to have and experience the abundant life. If we learn, believe, and practice these principles, our lives will never be the same again. Today we will begin our journey by introducing the first two of the eight principles that lead to experiencing the abundant life. A principle is a truth. It's a command. It's a rule of conduct. It's a spiritual law or action that never changes and always works. If you find a success principle, what's so wonderful about finding a success principle, if it works for her, it will work for you. The principle doesn't change. It works for anyone that learns it and applies it. And that's why people go to success seminars to learn how to do all kinds of things. They want to learn the secrets to success in that industry or in that business. And if I could learn the secrets of how to sell and how to close or, or how to do that and find out why you're getting success and you could give me the principles, this is all I need to do is learn the principles and apply them and I will get the same results that you got because the principles are the thing that causes success and cause abundance and cause the abundant life to be activated in your life. So today we're going to be talking about two principles and this is this is a principle, two foundational principles to experiencing the full life that God has for you. We're not, this is not a, a prosperity gospel message. This is a message of Jesus Christ letting you know this is a life I've come to give you. And if I've come to give you this life, why don't you receive it and experience it for yourself? Right? You do not need to get jealous if someone else is doing great. You don't need to get jealous if someone else is progressing. You don't need to get jealous if someone's recovering, if they're doing better than they were doing. Because what God did for them, he also wants to do for you. He loves us all the same. In the world, you know, we become haters and, and we, we just, like when people get ahead, we try to tear them down. And we just think because they're going ahead, that means you can't get ahead. But the God has this for everyone. So let's, let's look at principle number one or, or principle number one. And this is real simple. Believe. Say it with me, believe. I must believe that God wants me to have an abundant life in order to experience it. You'll never have the life that God has for you if you don't believe it's for you. Many of us have been beat down by life. And because you've been beat down by life, it's hard for you to believe that it's for you. Maybe you could believe it's for somebody else, but not me. Not me. That God couldn't bless me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know the family I've come from. You don't know my lack of education. And you start going over all your resume of every reason that you don't apply, it doesn't apply to you. But the reality is if you keep thinking that and you keep believing it, your reality will be exactly what you got. It's only going to get worse. This abundant life or anything you want to receive from God, this is all you need. Believe it. And if you believe it, you can have it. 
Let's look at the promise that Jesus gave us. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, this Jesus speaking. Imagine Jesus speaking to you and he says this. Therefore, I tell you, everything that you ask for in prayer, of course, according to his will, believe that you've received it and it will be yours. I'm going to read it again. Everything that you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will be yours yours. Now, when we go to, to God to get something, we can't buy it. It's not like the exchange, a Best Buy, you want a TV, you have to go in with some money or credit card to get it. But we, the exchange of heaven is not money. The exchange of heaven is faith, is belief. And if you believe it, that you've received it, it will be yours. Now, that, that breaks it down even a little more. You don't believe it when you see it. You believed it when you prayed it. And that means, uh, let's go deeper. I believe that all my children are going to serve the Lord because I prayed to the Lord for all my children to serve God. I attached the scripture as for me and my house, everybody is going to serve God. Now you go back to your children, you just prayed. And you go back to your children and they're still acting like the devil. You don't get your evidence by their, the way they're acting. You get your evidence by your faith in God. And then you go back and you tell your children, I know you're acting like the devil. I could see my eyes. But I also know what I prayed about you and for you this morning. And there's a difference in that prayer. I didn't just pray out of desperation. I prayed out of faith, and I know it because I received something. And I know this, you're going to serve God. I'm saving you a seat right next to me. All of you are going to serve God. All of you are going to get set free, and all of you are going to be in heaven with me. Mama, how do you know that? We don't even believe in God. You don't have to believe it. I believe it. And one day, your life is going to match up to my prayer that I received at 1024 this morning. We need to learn how to pray and receive before we see. You don't receive it when you see it. When you see it, it's just a manifestation of what you re received and believed when you prayed. Well, I need a job, man. I got I to gotta, pray. God wants you to have a job. Pray. When do you get the job? When you prayed. I believe I received it. When I prayed. And when do you celebrate? You pray, you celebrate right after you received it by faith. And you know, back in the day, I grew up in a small little church, and they would say, you got to pray through. They would say something like that. So they wouldn't even let you get off. Like you, you, You'd have to come to the front and pray and kneel down. And then the, 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 um, ma the mamas in the church would say, get back down there. You ain't done yet. And they push you right down. And I'd be down there for another half hour. I go, I'm done. She goes, no, you're not. You got to pray through. And I'm not saying we're going to do that. But some of us pray. The only prayers we do is for our McDonald's meal. And you got to run a McDonald's life. It's a joke. But there has to be a time in your life that you believe what Jesus said. That if you believe it and you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Why are you so depressed if you believe that what you prayed for is already yours? Give God some praise. Get the depression out and get the hope in. Get the faith in. But this is the rule. This is the law. This is the principle. You believe, you receive what you believe. That abundant life's not for me. Don't worry about it. You'll never have it. I'm not trying to be cold-blooded. You a prophet, I say, it won't be for you. See, I told you it wasn't for me. No, you said it wasn't for you. You said the breakthrough wasn't for you. You said the healthy relationships weren't for you. You were saying the prosperity wasn't for you. You were saying the promotion is not for you. You were saying that the health is not for you. You were saying salvation is not for you. You were saying eternal life is not for you. You're the one that's saying that. That's not what Jesus is saying. Why don't you line up your life with Jesus instead of lining your life with society, lining your life up with your condition, lining your, lining your life up with your circumstance, and lining your life up with the devil. I'm smiling. We're okay. Are, we, are you with me? 
on the same line of thought. If we doubt, we will not receive. So the idea, if you believe, you'll receive. If you don't believe, you won't receive. Doubt is an, is an enemy from receiving anything from God, including the abundant life. We must be careful that we're not letting what people say or our troubled past convince us that abundant life is not for us. Doubt makes us mentally and emotionally unstable. It kills our faith, vision, confidence, and our ability to receive anything from God. This is the idea. What doubt makes you spiritually and mentally paralyzed. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to heal you today. We're going to take all that doubt and unbelief and victimization, and we're going to give you the truth. Jesus saying, I want to give you an abundant life and we're going, to get it from, we're going to get it from God. But look at this. If you doubt, look what the Bible says if you doubt. James 1.6 says, but when you ask God, you must believe. When you ask God, you must believe. Don't doubt him. Now, you could doubt people. But don't put Jesus in the category of people. People lie. People disappoint you. People backbite you. People like you today if you got stuff and they back out on you when you're in trouble. That's not how God is. I, I see people, I see because I, we do a lot of ministry in the hood. You know how many gang members were down for their hood until they got in trouble? And when they got in trouble, their hood was no longer down for them. You know how many promises have been broken in our lives? And God says, I'm not a man that I should lie. When I give you a promise, you could bank on that. If I say it, you could bank on it, you could believe in it and receive in it and confess it until you have it. What are we confessing? The Word of God. Look at this. Whoever doubts is like a wave in the sea that is blown up and down by the wind. All that means is you're just unstable. It's just all over up, down, up, down. Your motion's up, motion's down. The tide is in, the tide is out. I believe God, as long as everything's going good. I don't believe now. I'm excited. I'm depressed. And I'm just saying, that's where you are, a wave. Circumstance changes your emotion. Circumstance changes your declaration. Circumstance changes your action. Circumstance determines whether you're going to go back to the drugs or go back to alcohol or stay in church. It, it just depends on the circumstance. And God is saying, stop being circumstantially driven. Stop being emotionally driven and start believing in the word of God. Today, we're going to get some facts. We're going to get some truth. I'm going to give you some principles and start living a principle-driven life, not an emotional-driven life. I'm so depressed. Why? ¿Qué pasó? My boyfriend left me. Okay, good. Better now than never or later. If you don't appreciate where you, where, who you are, you, yeah. I mean, you got to get to the point that you got so much value in you and you know who you are that if you leave me, you're leaving a good thing. And don't you come back trying to do this thing all over because I probably move on by then because I got, I got great, God has great plans for my life. I'm not desperate and you're not going to make me whole. I have a God already that makes me complete. I guarantee you start doing that. All of a sudden, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, go, I don't know. You know why we're so, we're, we're so, uh, I would say, we, we're, we're, we're so, uh, I would say desperate. Because we don't know our value. All the doubts messing up your thinking and value. Uh, we're going to build some value today. You guys are awesome. Okay, we're going to see what God says. People like that, these doubters, are like, are thinking two different things at the same time. I believe, I don't believe. I'm victorious, no, I'm defeated. I'm a winner, no, I'm a loser. I'm loved. No, I'm not. I'm not. No one loves me. All right. They can never decide what to do. So they should not think they'll receive anything from the Lord. And what he's saying is when you're doubting, you don't have the exchange for a miracle. You cannot receive anything from God with doubt. You could only receive something from God with faith in him. How do you build your faith? You build your faith by studying, meditating on the word of God. You're not going to build your faith watching a whole bunch of YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Oh, my gosh, that cat's so funny. Oh, God. Some of us have YouTube faith. You're, 
Facebook faith, but you don't have biblical faith. It's time for you to get your values, not from CNN or any, come on, any news network. Or you need to get your values and your, your foundation of who you are from the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. God's principles never fail. That's why it's the number one best-selling book in the world. Because people that apply, find out the principles, they learn them, and they apply them, experience the abundant life that everyone's looking for. You're looking. I'm telling you where to find it. So principle number one was believe. I must believe that God wants me to have an abundant life in order to experience. Principle number two, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only source of the abundant life. There's a certain life. Have you, you, there's, a, there's a gang life. There, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a gambling life. There's a, you know, L.A. lifestyle. You know, there's a verdugos, sureño lifestyle. Right? There, there's, a, there's, there's people that live in the uppity up, 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 up places lifestyle. The rich and famous lifestyle, they're all lifestyles. But all those lifestyles without Jesus leave them empty and they're searching and they're still thirsty. Thirsty, but I got good news for you. Jesus wants to give you a new abundant life. This is what Jesus says. So now let's hear, there was a saying, let's hear from the horse's mouth. And what that means is let's hear straight from the source. So Jesus now, this idea of abundant life, Abundant living, living abundantly. Where did that idea come from? It came from Jesus himself. Look at John 10.10. 10. It says this. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. This, this, this scripture is a comparison contrast. You can live under the thief's leadership. And this is what he's going to do. Kill, steal, and destroy. Kill and steal and destroy. All three in one package. This is, the thief is the devil. And he, what he does, he has a system to rip you off of your dreams, kill your spirit, destroy your life, destroy your relationships. And this is what he does. He kills and he steals and he destroys. Now, you don't have to live under that leadership anymore because there is a but here. And, and when I say but, in, the, in one of the versions, said, but, but I've come. Say it with me. But I've come. So when, when you hear the word but, it's kind of like this. I love you, but... Basically, when I say but, that means what I'm ready to tell you will just cancel out what I just told you. I love you, but the idea is what he's ready to tell you is he don't really love you. And now he's saying the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But there's a version that says, but I've come. So let's cancel out that thief life. Let's cancel out all the loss and let's cancel out all the ruin. Let's cancel all that out and let's start over because I've come to give you something. I love this. Look what he says. But I came so that they would have life. Say it with me, have life. So what did Jesus come to give us? A life. He didn't come to give us a religion. There's people in here that this is your first time in church and, and you don't like coming to church. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't like religion. And I'm going to give you good news. Jesus doesn't like religion either. It was actually the religious people that crucified him, killed him. What he came to do is give you a full life. He came to give you a relationship. He became to give you what you've been searching your whole life for. The life. We should write a book, The Life. Have, this, have life and have it abundantly. How does God want you to have this life? So let's look at those two words. That word life is a Greek word and it's Zoe. Say Zoe. So it's not just life, it's just not life in general. This is not a dictionary definition. This is actual Greek definition of what this word exactly means. He's not giving you a life that you could get anywhere but through him. Jesus came to give it to you, and he's the only one that can give it to you. And this is what it means. If you want it, you could have it. It means absolute fullness of life, which belongs to God. Absolute fullness of life which belongs to God. Not absolute emptiness, not absolute depression, not absolute hopelessness, not absolute helplessness, not an absolute victim, but an absolute fullness, fullness of my joy, fullness of my peace, fullness of my life, fullness of my power. What's, what he's saying is when I give it, I don't give it just 
I don't give you just enough. I give you more than enough. It's full. Now, and this is what it really means. Full to overflowing. Someone say full to what? So we want, we want a full life. I'll give it to you right here. It means also, and it's a, which belongs to God. This life belongs to God. And it's received by all who believe and trust in Jesus alone as their Lord and Savior. The abundant life results in a devoted life to God that is supremely blessed in this world and continues for eternity. So this blessing doesn't begin when you die and go to heaven. Some of us have a mentality, one of these days I'm going to be blessed. And God says, what are you waiting for? When I gave you the abundant life, it starts now. I'm giving you a down payment of what's coming. I'm giving you a down payment on your joy, a down payment on your victory, a down payment on your prosperity, a down payment, come on, on my wisdom. You're going to get the full thing when you get to heaven, but I've already given you a little heaven on earth. That's why you can pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth the way it already is in heaven. Does anybody want some of the abundance right now? Now, it's eternal life. Another way to say abundant life is eternal life. Say it with me, eternal life. The abundant life is not just, just a quantity of life, but it's an unmatched quality of life. So we just covered life, Zoe, abundantly. It means more than it's necessary. So what God is saying, anything I do, I don't just give you enough to get by. What I, the way I do it is more than enough. We see this consistently in Scripture. And one of the examples is when Jesus fed the 5,000. Uh, there was maybe 5,000 men, the Scripture said, but maybe there was 15 to 20,000 people that were there, and there were no stores, and they had no food. So Jesus went to the disciples and said, let's, the idea, the conclusion was, let's feed them, and I want you to feed them. And they said, we don't have enough food. Even, even if there wasn't enough food, we don't have enough money to buy. He goes, I didn't ask you all that. This is what I'm going to ask you. I told you to feed them and give me what you got. So what they found was five loaves and two fish. Now, when he, he made them sit down in groups of 50. What he's doing, he's already preparing for a miracle. Some of you guys are preparing for defeat, and you should be preparing for a breakthrough. So we're going to start getting you in the mindset to start receiving. Instead of receiving the same old cycle that you've been in, God is saying, let's prepare groups of 50. Let's start organizing yourself. Let's start getting prepared for a miracle and a breakthrough. Is there anybody setting their lives up for something better than they have right now? If you believe it, it's time to get educated for it. It's time to save up for it. It's time to, come on, clean the garage for it. It's time to start getting the house ready for it. It's time to start packing for it. God is saying, I'm ready to do something new? Is there anybody ready to follow God's instruction and blessing and promise of abundance for you? So now, this is what happens. They grant groups of 50. They give them what they got, five loaves and two fish. By the time they're done, the disciples distribute the food. They feed everybody to the point. It was all you can eat fish and bread buffet. Hey, do you guys like them going to buffets? I usually get more on my plate than I eat. I don't want to make sure I don't get ripped off and I don't eat all. Of them. I'm going to eat my share, right? But this is what happened. They all ate as much as they wanted. And then afterwards, he goes, pick up the leftovers. And you know how many, ba there was 12 baskets full. Because when God meets a need, he don't meet just enough. He meets overflow. So what happens, the guy, the people that were involved in the abundant miracle of feeding the 20,000 people, they got big baskets. It wasn't like a little basket that you put bread in at, 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 um, at claim jumpers. We're talking about, we're talking about a basket this big that you put on your back and it's as big as a man and you're walking around with it. And there was 12 baskets left over. It was not a coincidence because it was 12 disciples. So God was saying, you were involved with the miracle. And when you get involved in a miracle with me, there's always an overflow. So this is what I want you to do. Take your basket home. It's not just for you. It's for your kids. It's for your neighborhood. It's for your village. What God is saying, when I do something, it's not just barely to get by. I didn't bring you here to survive. I brought you here to thrive. And I want to get more than enough to you so you could be a big blessing. But there's, a, there's like a fight against this. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm good. Do you know, you say, I don't mind you being content, but I don't want you so content that you've lost vision for more. Don't let your situation kill your dreams. 
And understand this, if you're saying I'm good, you know what that is? That's not, that's not spiritual, that's selfish. You should be saying, God bless me more than I am today. Not because I need a bigger bank account, because I want to be a bigger blessing. And there's people all around me. If they need food, I could take my cousin to right down the state of brothers. And cousin, don't you worry about food because you got somebody that's blessed. You go ahead and buy whatever you want. I'll just push a little shopping cart around. Because cousin, do you remember when I was in your same position? I was strung out. I was lost. I had no place to live. I had no food. But when Jesus came into my life and I received a abundant life. He blessed me and now baby, I can bless you. Cousin, don't you worry. Don't trip. I got you. Come on, does anybody want to be in a place that you can bless your family, bless your church, bless your neighborhood, bless the world? Some of the preaching you're going to do is not going to be here with your mouth. Some of the preaching you're going to do is you're going to do it through blessing people. We got to start dreaming. Get ready. Look what it says. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to build your faith to receive what God has. God wants to do something exceedingly abundantly, much more than, uncommon, super abundant, exceeding measure, rank. I want to do this for you. So what we need to do first is build our faith. So we're going to read John 10, 10 together in different versions. And this is how you build your faith. You keep quoting and reading the scripture over yourself until you believe it for you. Okay? So we're going to, this is how we're going to fight depression. This is how we're going to fight poverty. This is how we're going to fight, we're going to fight disease. This is how we're going to, we're going to fight hopelessness. This is how we're going to fight demons. This is how we're going to fight, we're going to fight what's trying to hold you down. This is how we're, we're going to fight all of it right now. And this is how you do it, through quoting scripture. It's saying it over to yourself. Let's go to John 10.10. 10. We're going to read this. Together. Say it together. Is it up there yet? John 10, 10. Okay. Read it together. One, two, three, begin. I came that may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Give the Lord a hand if you're receiving that. All right. John 10, 10 in the Jewish Bible. Let's read it together. One, two, three, begin. Come on. Come on, are you feeling it already? Come on, are you feeling it already? That's for, Imagine if you wake up every morning and you start claiming what Jesus has said over you. All you got to do is believe it and receive it and say, that's mine. Let's go to verse 10. I mean, I'm sorry, it's still saying still say verse 10. C-E-B. One, two, three, begin. That's it. Just read that part. The rest is my notes. All right. All right, John 10, 10, EXB, read this. But I came to give life that they may have life, life in all its fullness and abundance. Isn't mean, that powerful? Full life, full joy, full peace. He goes, everything I do is overflow stuff. Do you believe it for you? You know how you start right now where you're at? You start small, but... The, the, but who cares how small you start? You're not going to remain small. You're going to go from little to a little more, to a little more, to a little more, to a little more. But this is one thing for sure, that more is in your future because God wants to use you to be a blessing to somebody. And you're thinking, me? That God could use me? Yeah. Five loaves, two fish in my hands does massive miracles. All you need to do is put your life in my hands. Stop saying I'm not educated enough. I'm too old. I'm too young. Oh, it's over. Stop all that. I don't have education. Mi familia. Where are we at? EXB? Oh, no, no. GW. It's not Jehovah Witness. <laughs> It'd be a J there anyways. But let's go. Ready? One, two, three. But I came so that my sheep will have life, so that they will have everything they need. I came so they'll have everything they need. They're my sheep. 
I'm their shepherd. I take care of them. And this is all you got to do. A shepherd leads sheep to pasture. A shepherd leads sheep to provision. A shepherd leads sheep to victory. A shepherd leads sheep. All you got to do is be leadable. And God says, if you'll let me lead you, I'll lead you to my abundance. I'll lead you to my pasture. I'll lead you to my provision. I'll lead you to your victory. I'll lead you to your purpose. Give God one more hand. It'll give you everything you need. Verse 10, TLB, one, two, three. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. NLT, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. In the voice, I came to give life with joy in abundance. Let's read it again. I came to give life with joy in abundance. One more time. I came to give life with joy in abundance. One more time. I came to give life with joy and abundance. Depression, you got to leave this place. Jesus, if you've come to give me joy and joy to let it overflow, God, I'm willing to do an exchange with you. I came in here hopeless. I came here full of anxiety. I came in here depressed. Jesus, let's make a deal. I'll give you my mess. I'll give you my pain. I'll give you my past. I'll give you my depression. Jesus, I'm ready to receive your joy. Are there any happy Christians in the house? Now, why would anybody want to follow you when you're not even happy following your leader? Uh, This is what he's saying. I've come to give you an abundant life, and I've come to give you fullness of life, fullness of peace, fullness of joy. All we're saying, I know we're in a battle, but you better, we better learn right now to receive this stuff. You don't have to earn it. It's a gift from God. And by, t- by, the, t- time this, by the time this series is over, 40 days, we're going to renew our minds so we could transform our lives. If this mind doesn't get changed, your life won't get changed. Some of you guys need to get a happy mind because all you've been doing is polluting your mind, and the world's been polluting your mind, social media has been polluting your mind, your situation's been polluting your mind, the devil's been polluting your mind, your mama polluting your mind, your daddy polluting your mind, your uncle polluting your mind, your perpetrator polluting your mind, every the drug dealer polluting your mind, your mind, everybody's polluting your mind. And God says, we're going to change your mind. We're going to cleanse your mind. I'm going to make you new. I'm going to transform your thinking. And then I'm going to transform your life. Give God one more praise. All right. Now, I'm going to make this real simple. What is the abundant life? One, a life of giving to others what we have abundantly received from God. That's all it is. An abundant life is I receive it from God and I give it to somebody else. That's an abundant life. You're not living an abundant life if you're just receiving and you're not giving. That's called a selfish life. That's called a life with no purpose. The reason you want God to bless you is you want God to bless you so you could be a greater blessing. Wouldn't it be great that we, we need to buy a home and let's say um, in, in Arizona and let's say the house costs $200,000 which is way less expensive, way expensive over there. Someone's going to move over there right now as soon as I said that. But 200 some thousand over there and, and, but you have two million in the account and God says, why don't you go ahead and buy that house? Wouldn't it be great to be in that position? Wouldn't you want to be in that position? I'll take care of the house. Don't you worry about it. What do we need over here? That bungalow? How much is that? 75 grand? No problem. I'll I'll handle that because we need to get those classes ready to get our children in there, our young adults in there. Don't stress. We got it. Because God's blessed us to be a blessing. Everything I have is for his honor anyways. Thank you, Jesus. Wouldn't it be great to be in that position? Wouldn't it be great that you overcome what you're facing right now, that you overcome it so powerfully that you're more than a conqueror and now you can help someone in the same condition that you came in here with. The problem that you have right now is not meant to defeat you. A matter of fact, it's, most, it's supposed to train you to put your faith in God. He's going to help you overcome it. And your pain and your struggle and your hurt is going to turn into a ministry to help others. Come on. You got to say this. Devil, God's not done with me yet. There's a process here. And this too, he overcame when he was on the cross. One more praise to God. If you got, you got, you got to start. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, 
God freely gives us eternal life, healing, freedom, abundance, so we can share with others. We receive, of course, to take care of our needs, but at the end, to give. That we get to be in a position that we could give. The purpose of our abundance is to give to those who are lost, sick, hurting, and oppressed all around us. God never gives us his abundance to hoard it. He gives it to us to give it. In Matthew 10, 8, it says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you received. Do you remember when you came? You were sick. You were dead. You wanted to die. It was hopeless. You had leprosy. You were contagious. Not only were you in a bad situation, you were spreading it to others. You were demonized. But there was a day that you came into the church where you met another believer and they told you, I was sick. I was contagious. I was ruining everything that I put my hand to. I was demonized. I wanted to die. I thought it was all over. But then I found out that the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. But the next portion of that sentence said, but Jesus came to give me an abundant life. And that Sunday morning, as I was listening to that crazy, crazy Puerto Rican preacher, I received a faith that I never had. And I gave my life to Jesus. And my life is not the same. And everything that God gave me, I'm healed now. I'm set free now. I'm whole now. I have a sound mind. I've been transformed by the power of God. And that same power that I received freely, I give it to you baby here you are in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus I command that spirit that's tormented her go you get it to give it this this series we're going to get your mind it's going to be crazy because this is what's going to happen your thinking is going to go to a whole nother level and as your thinking goes to a new other level it's going to allow God to download thoughts that you've never had in your life. I, I, I remember um, today, we had a, a young man that came in, strung out on drugs and struggling. and Like everybody comes hurting and broken. And as a result of being a disciple in his church, he got through struggles. He fell down, he, kept, he got back up, fell down, get back up, fell down, but he never gave up. Kept coming. And then... He was working for someone, and, and then God downloaded an idea. You like cooking? Why don't you open up a restaurant? And he was really good at barbecuing. So he opened a, a, a restaurant, and it was very hard for him to do, I think in Beaumont or Yucaipa area. And then the next step, the business was stabilized. He was doing really, it was doing better. This guy that never had a business, doesn't come from a business family. He's off the streets, but he got an idea. He started thinking bigger. Some of you guys are gonna get an idea to, to reach more people than you've ever reached. There's gonna be downloads of dreams. God says, I'm gonna expand your thinking so I can expand your life in these next 40 days. If you take these next 40 days serious, I guarantee you this, you're not gonna think the way you are. I would rush to go get this book. There's only a certain amount of books left. Every day is a, just a small portion of scripture you're gonna read you're going to meditate on it, and this is going to happen little by little. Your mind's going to start thinking a lot more like Jesus. And when you start thinking more like Jesus, you tap into the unlimited power of Jesus in your life to help others. Jesus was never limited. So this is the commitment. Someone say commitment. You cannot go to the next level of life without next level commitment. Look what it says. It has a commitment agreement. Someone say 10 commitments. Commitment number one, I commit to completing this daily devotional book. Get the book. Get one for your, each person in your family. I commit to memorizing all eight principles. Today we cover two principles. Number three, I commit to making a list of ten things I'm grateful for. We're going to get all the complaining out and we're going to get gratitude in. And when you change, when you, become, when, we, when, when you change your attitude, you change your altitude. Number four, I commit to creating a prayer list and praying for it daily. Everything I pray for, believe in, I receive. You're going to start believing in your prayer. I commit to taking notes on Sunday and Wednesday We're gonna, and every service. We're going to start now reading the word, coming to, to, coming to church at, like we're coming to, to school. I'm going to learn something. I'm not going to let one idea escape me. 
I'm going to commit to creating a monthly budget, a savings plan, and a plan to eliminate all debt in my life. Someone's going to become debt free when it's all said and done. You're going to start budgeting your money. Understand this. You, God cannot bless you with more when you're not managing well what you have. You got to start managing. You have to know which eat, where the dollars are going. You don't let the dollars just escape you without saying, you get your permission. So you're going to start assigning every, and I, when, you're, when you're a good steward is what God does. He bless you with more. And so I did. You could have a great heart. I want to be a big giver. I want to help. But if you don't steward right, you're not going to be blessed with more because it's management and generosity go together. Let's keep going. So we're going to teach you how to do that. So don't worry about it. We're not, you don't have to figure out. We're going to show you how to do that. I commit to loving and forgiving everyone. I commit to being a lifetime tither. Oh, I forgot seven. I commit to eating healthier and starting a weekly exercise routine. Exercise too? Everything. Everything, okay? Man, people are going to come out like, they're going to come out with a six-pack and Jesus. All right. All right. I commit to lifetime, being a lifetime tither. I commit to bringing a year in offering on Sunday, December 10th, a matter of fact. And we'll get into that, but just sign, get the book, sign it, and it's really easy to read. Have your prayer list, have your Thanksgiving, things you're thankful for. And every day, day one, two, I'll go to day 40. It's going to be really simple. Read it. And I wrote it in a way that if you've never read anything about the Bible, you'll get it. And you'll understand it. Super, super simple. I want to thank you for being here today. And, and we're going to dismiss in just a second. Christian will, uh, will dismiss us. But how many here are ready to receive the abundant life that God has for you. Come on, give yourself, come on, give the Lord a half you believe that. I'm receiving it. Because if you could get it, if God could get it to you, he could now get it through you to somebody else that's hurting and broken. Get ready for God to do some great things in your life. Generational curses of poverty are going to be broken. Generational curses of hopelessness are going to be broken. And generational curses of just apathy. I don't, I don't care. That's going to be broken. The reason you don't care is because you've been let down so much. It's too, it's too painful to care. But God's going to give you your passion back. God's going to give you your dreams back. God's going to give you your family back. God's going to give you purpose. And the purpose is to receive salvation and eternal life and give it to everybody that we meet. How many believe that's a great way to live? God bless you. Now, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, we're going to continue this. Next Sunday, we're going to go over another principle. But this week, we're going to, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to talk about this week. I'm going to talk about the power of the guiding principles. We're going to, I'm going to show you the power of a principle this Wednesday night. You want to be here if you can make it. And then next Sunday, we'll continue the series. Amen. Amen. How many received that word today? Well, before anyone else leaves, we want to kindly ask that you just remain seated just for these few moments. And we want to give everybody the opportunity to really, truly receive this abundant life. You know, the sad reality is that there is an opposite to this abundant life. And the enemy gives us this life. And it, actually, it's not life at all. It's death. It's destruction. It's depression. It's misery. These are all the symptoms. These are all the byproducts of living life apart from Jesus. This is not a life that anybody wants to live. Nobody, nobody wakes up wanting to be depressed. Nobody, nobody goes throughout their day, throughout their weeks, desiring to feel anxious. These do not come from God. No one goes day to day wanting these negative thoughts about themselves or unforgiveness towards others. This is, this is not something that God has given us. But I believe that Jesus today is speaking to you. And I believe that you're gonna answer this call today where Jesus is saying, I wanna give you life and life in abundance. So would you trade? Would you give Jesus a trade today? Will you give up your sin? Will you, will you give up your depression or the anxiety or even the fear? Will you let that go? so that God can finally give you the abundant life he's been wanting to give you? Today could be that day, this moment. The harsh, the scary reality is that we will all die one day. And when we die, we will step foot into eternity. Eternity means never ending. There are only one of two destinations that we will end up. We will either be in heaven with God forever or we will be in hell, separated from God.
Not because that was a place designed for us, but because we chose to reject God. So we chose to be separated from him forever. Hell was not designed for you and I. It was designed for Satan and his demons. But when we, just, when we deny Jesus, we're saying, God, I don't want to be with you. Today, you can make a decision to receive the abundant life that Jesus is promising you today. Eternal life. He's offering that to you today. How can he give you eternal life? It's not based on you being a good person because none of us can do good enough to say, God, I deserve it. It's only because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Jesus took your place. Jesus took your punishment. Jesus took your faults and he put it on himself on the cross. And he said, I did this because I love you. And he defeated sin and death once and for all time so that you can have eternal life. And he resurrected from the dead so that we can have life. That's how we can receive eternal life and the abundant life today. So I wanna ask you, when I count to three, if you're in this room and you wanna receive Jesus, you wanna receive abundant life, and you wanna give up all the symptoms, all the pains, all the things you've been holding on to, and lay them at the feet of Jesus, then when I count to three, I want everybody in this room saying, that's me, I want you to raise your hand at the count of three. One, two, three, raise your hands all over this place. You're saying, that's me, I see you, I'm proud of you. I see you too, I'm proud of you. I see you over here, I'm proud of you. I see you back there, I'm proud of you. I see you, I'm proud of you. I see you, I'm proud, I see you guys. I see you guys right here. I see you too, I'm proud of you. Anybody else, I see you guys. I see you guys, I see you guys, I'm proud of you. I see you, I see you, I see you. Man, there's dozens of hands going up. I see you guys, I see you over here. Anybody else in the back? I see you guys. Can we do one more thing? If you raise your hand today, can you do one more bold step in front of everybody here? This is not to embarrass you, but this is to say, I am boldly standing and making a statement. Will you stand to your feet if you raise your hand right now? Boldly stand up, don't hesitate. Say, that's me, I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you guys. Come on, let's give them a hand. Make your way forward, make your way forward. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's give them a round of applause. If you stood up today, make your way forward to the front. Let's give them a hand as they make their way forward. Give us a chance to pray with you, to congratulate you. Come on up, if you raise your hand, we wanna pray with you today. We have a team that would love to pray with you and congratulate you. Come on, this is a big moment right now. Always make a way. Make your way forward. Come on, they're still coming, which means we're you still clapping. We're still excited for you. We're so proud of you today. Always make a way. Yes. And for everybody that's coming up right now, your next step, say this with me. Holy Warriors. Your next step is Holy Warriors class. This is a class that's designed to train you and equip you and help you grow in your walk with God. You'll never be the same. I love, I'm seeing a lot of young adults up here today. Let's give God some praise for that. That's awesome. That's awesome. This class starts Tuesday and next Sunday. Your life will never be the same. God's gonna show you how to walk with him, how to read the word, how to fight, how to grow. And the person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you and they're gonna help you get signed up for the class, okay? Let's do this together. I wanna make sure everyone's covered. We probably need a few more, uh, a few more guy leaders, men leaders over here. We have some guys over here, some gentlemen. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Praise God, I wanna make sure everyone's covered up here. And I wanna make sure everybody knows tonight, so I'm gonna say tonight, we have one of the last showings of the Crossroads drama. This is one of the best live and video dramas you will ever see. But it's not just for you, it's gonna change somebody's life. People are getting saved left and right. Bring somebody tonight, Pastor Marco will be there. This is gonna be one of the last showings. And you may be wondering, I thought I was sold out. There are more tickets available. We just opened up some seats, but you're gonna to wanna to get there. Get there tonight, you can show up. We will make sure we have room for you. We will find a place for you. Be there tonight at 6 p.m. in Pomona. This is gonna be at the Pomona campus. Address is up here. 398 West 3rd Street in Pomona at our Pomona campus. All right, let's say a word of prayer as we dismiss. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for going to the cross and raising from the dead so that I can be saved. Forgive me of my sin. I acknowledge that I've messed up, that I've sinned against you. But I believe that through your blood, 
I can be washed clean and given a new life. So renew my heart. Make me a new person. But not just that. I receive the abundant life that you promised me. I give you my old life for the abundant life. I receive it now. Make me a new person. And from this moment forward, I will live for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. One more shout of praise to King Jesus. We love you, church. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful Sunday. We'll see you Wednesday as we continue this series. And make sure you go get your books. Get your books. You have a chance to grab your books. These these devotionals, the 40-day devotional will change your life. Don't leave here without it. If you need prayer, come forward. We love to pray with you.